Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Pumpkin Becky. In this week's video, we're going to be repotting my maple forest, which I bought from Windy Bank Bonsai Nursery. Let's get started. I've had this yummy little forest for some years now probably four or maybe five years um, it's gorgeous it's got lots of knobbly bits and weird bumpy bits but I love it I absolutely love it it has sort of got itself a bit one-sided in the pot it's sort of all round at the back of the pot and um, well, I just sort of think it needs a little bit of sorting out, really. It's, I think I've lost at least one tree from it, if not two. And I definitely saw it sort of starting to look a bit raised in the pot last year around the rim. I did take the rim back down. So I think, I hope, there's an awful lot of roots in here. So we're going to have a look at that. I had fully planned to repot my maple katsura this year, but as you can see, she got away from me a little bit. <laughs> uh, she is so early into leaf, and uh, this seems to be a year where she's gone particularly early. I have been really good and been very diligent about removing the bud casings so that the leaves start to break a little bit earlier they're not um, they're not trying to extend past the bug casing before they can leaf out and that seems to help keep the internode length a little bit tighter um, I can just see there's a few on here on buds which have only just opened I can just go through and pull those off. There is a video about that technique here. I learnt it from Morton Albeck. So back to my little maple forest. I can see it's been holding a lot of water over winter, which as we have seen with previous repottings, that's not a surprise. Um, it's been a very wet winter. There are lots of adventitious buds popping on most of the trees, but they seem to be all located up near the top. The tops of the trees are always going to be the most vigorous, so having lots of buds up here is great because it means that we can start to replace overly thickened branches that are appearing up at the top with much finer growth and continue that tapering as it goes up. Overall, it's doing really well every summer it puts on a lovely cloud of canopy it would be nice to try and find that main tree which looking at it now I think it's probably this one and just actually start to create a little bit more difference between that and some of the other bigger trees so anyway let's get it out of its pot We've got one long strap of wire. And I'm going to hold on to as many trees as I can. This should be really nicely knitted together. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, that is a lot of roots and you can see just how wet this is so let's go digging I'm just going to use my chopstick to start freeing up that edge it would be nice if I could actually start to sort of exaggerate the the shape of the ground level within the pot I think that could add quite a bit to this little grouping Ooh, it's so lovely and warm in here that the auto vents are opening on the greenhouse, which is um, nice, good for ventilation, but unfortunately it's motorbike city out there today on the road and um, 
there's going to be an awful lot of motorbike noise. This is a really thirsty little group of trees. Um, obviously now it hasn't got any leaves on, it's not really consuming the water that's sitting here in the root mass. So I think, you know, just getting in here, tidying out those roots, it's all going to help it for the coming year. You can see how sludgy the Akadama has gone. Yesterday I was repotting and increasing the size of my hornbeam forest and my shoulders were absolutely screaming by the end of it. So I'm hoping this repot isn't quite so torturous as that one was. With that one all the trees were separate because well, I was adding new trees to a fairly young planting. Because this is much more mature, the root systems will have sort of matted together. So unless I actually try and remove some trees, which it's possible I might try and move some, um, this should stay fairly stable for me. Oh. Yesterday was just a wrestling match from beginning to end. It took hours. And I'm not in any mad rush to get this done today. I just I want to take my time. This is the first time I've looked at the roots on this forest. Obviously, you can see that, you know, all of this can come off. And shortly, I will do that. But I'm not going to just start pulling it about. I want to know what I've got in the pot before I start making big decisions on things. So when forest plantings are completely developed and you're happy with the layout, then it is possible to just completely unpot them like this as a whole sheet and then just root prune the sheet and put it back or move it into a new pot. But because this is the first time I'm looking at the roots of this, I just want to take my time see what I've got. It's not like the roots are going to be drying out anytime soon because this root ball is so wet. <laughs> now whether this was intended to be, but for me it is, this is the back of the planting. We've got some big wounds that are pretty ugly on this back side. So for me, that is more like the front. I mean, I've still got some, some scars, but you don't see those so much once the canopy's out. And so for some reason, the planting has sort of found its way a little bit towards the back of the pot. So it would be nice to address that by taking back this front edge of root more and just allowing me to bring this whole planting forward in the pot. This will have been a Japanese import. I think all of Ken at Windy Banks Trees are. And he has some absolute crackers. I cannot recommend Windy Bank Bonsai Nursery enough not sponsored, just spent a lot of money with them. <laughs> He's such a nice chap, is Ken. And if you go onto their website, you can have a little look at, at their latest delivery of trees that are coming over from Japan now. I'm pretty sure he hasn't got any tropicals or indoor bonsai. Uh, I think everything is deciduous evergreen outdoor trees. 
I might be wrong. We're getting further into the root ball now and I'm starting to try and take out any really big crossing over roots. Um, although this is going to form a mat, I still want it to be organised. And what I do know is I've got one huge root expands from this tree right over to goodness knows where so oh there it comes I am going to cut that off it would be nice to try and sort of get the height down a little bit on this group. Obviously it's had at least four years of me feeding it and there being moss on the top. So it's gained some <laughs> topsoil effectively which has started to sort of cover up the bases of the tree. So it would be nice to just try and expose those again make sure they're actually at the right height in the planting. hoping that the sun coming in through the greenhouse windows is going to start to dry this out a little tiny bit because oh my goodness it's wet. Oh there's another big one. Gosh. found the original main tree I think it's in here I think I just cut the trunk off when it died so that I didn't have to disturb the roots Good. 
this root is trying to wrap itself around the trunk of that tree so and that needed to come off that is a really vigorous root I'm going to take that off there's quite a big root here oh, a big cluster of big roots here but this one's got lots of stuff that's trying to grow up so I'm going to cut that right back So this was probably planted up with cuttings in Japan and then grown on for a few years before it was imported. Keep going through looking for the overly strong roots. Any knuckles? Because the pot that I've got this in is a forest training pot. Forest plantings generally have really super shallow root systems. Uh, be planted on slabs of slate or you know that sort of thing or in really really shallow pots so reducing what we have under here is really important so I had a slight change of plan and um, hmm, I decided to break the forest apart and see if I could have another go. I think it's going to give me the opportunity to try and hide some of those big scars I was talking about at the beginning. So for this, I am going to add some tie down wire. I don't need to add any drainage mesh into this because the pot has already got meshed holes. So I'm just going to start filling with a pumice, lava and akadama mix. Maples grow really happily in akadama so I'm using a little bit more of that in my mix than I would normally. These are my three biggest trees and I think of the three this is the best shaped one. Ideally I'd like to kind of try to rotate this one with all its scarring. I'm going to go ahead and divide these three. Well, there's two. <laughs> these two are either fused together or they were already together. This has actually got quite a two-tiered root system so I'm going to try and remove the lower section actually I'm going to go in with my secateurs Ooh, blimey. <laughs> wow that's solid I'm 
I'm just going to very loosely tie it down with the wire there, just until I start to get some other trees in position. These two being sort of the next thickest and bonded together, I could actually pop onto the other side. I do want to try and hide this scarring. not going to be very easy. Hmm. These are all very similar in diameter. It's quite tricky to try and select them by scale. I need to bear in mind that these trees have been growing like this for quite some time, so their sort of branching structure is, is set. As I was saying on yesterday's video, I'm not a mad fan of forest plantings which do a lot of leaning out. So I just want to be aware of how far I'm letting that flare. Let's start to get those in, shall we? So we're just going to get those seated down. I'm going to break out my Christmas present, my gin pliers, and get those twisted. Make sure the soil components are chopsticked in around all the roots. So as always we're just using the chopstick to feed the soil components into any voids under the trees and around the trees. I'm not trying to crush any of the soil components, I'm just feeding them into any voids so that side's looking pretty good. Now I just need to work on this side. And there's an extra tree somewhere. There you are.
bonsai isn't like a puzzle. You don't put the last piece in and go, it's finished. It's always evolving, always changing. Always growing. <laughs> you might have a vision for a tree, but actually when it comes to it, it's not capable of being what you wanted it to be. Maybe it just needs to grow again and then you can have another go when it's regained its vigour. Added some branches. Added some thickness. And it's probably going to be that for now moss is going to be the thing that helps me keep these surface roots damp, get them growing. I'm certainly struggling to keep the <laughs> keep the soil inside the pot and the roots keep bouncing up so So I think that's made quite a nice difference to this grouping. It's spaced them out a little bit more. Still quite nice and random. It's utilising more of the pot. We're now coming forward in the pot. And all right, I've got some, some shaping to do. I need to sort of correct where I've moved trees round and they're not quite growing in the place that they were growing in before. So the, they were pruned to shape now I need to get them pruned to this shape <laughs> but that can happen a little bit later on down the line other than that I'm really pleased with it next step for this forest is to get it watered and get some moss on I have got a lot of surface roots which are still just just under the surface so I need to be really careful of that and uh, moss will help Right, well that's it for this week's video. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe to me here on YouTube. And until next time, bye.